Hi, my name is Michelle. Welcome to the No Code Space Lab. Today we're going to create our first app together without any lines of code. It's going to be an inventory app, which is going to be really useful in your personal or professional life. You will be able to customize it as much as you want. And together, we're going to explore all the basic concepts of VoltApp. So are you ready to become a no-code developer? Hello everyone, welcome to this VoltApp tutorial to learn how to create your first app. This tutorial is not meant to be a super in-depth tutorial because there's a lot of different tutorials that we have, like our complete guide that teaches you how to use every single aspect of VoltApp very precisely, or the VoltaBlog series, which allows you to create an app from scratch where we explain every single step in detail. Here, our idea today is to get your first app up and running without knowing every single piece of information perfectly, but being able to create a first app and to get some knowledge out of that. So to start, I'm going to present very quickly the interface. So when you create your project, you arrive on this page where you have in the center of the preview of the app where you can see how the app would look like. Then on this side, you have the node hierarchy where you can see all of the nodes of your app. The nodes are small building blocks that combine together create features. For example, here there is an image node, a text node, and there are some other nodes that are visual that allow you to create some pieces of the interfaces, like text, images, inputs, or to place several nodes together. But there are also nodes like Airtable, for example, that will allow you to connect to a database and other kind of features as well. So we're not going to go into detail on every single kind of node you can have, but we will use some of them while creating our app today. So if I click on this node hierarchy, as you can see, it's highlighted in the preview like this. And it also changes the right side of the screen, which is the node inspector. The node inspector allows you to change some attributes related to the node and to change its behavior. So for example, if I go to title and I change this, the text will change. I can also change its size or many different characteristics depending on what you want to do on the node. You can also drag and drop nodes like this or directly from the preview like this to change its order and spirals. Then you can change the mode here. So for example, if I use graph mode, it's the part where you will create some logic to configure out how the node will behave. So I can say, when you click on this image, do this task, do that task. And we'll talk more about this later in the tutorial. Then here's the variable panel, in which you can see all the variables. And as you can see for now, there's only one variable, which is the theme, because it's created on the app node. So it's available on the image node. It's actually available on every node, because every node is a child of the app node. But when you create more variables, you will have the number of variable created on each node, and only the variables created on parent nodes will be available. So on image, you have the variables that were created on this node, and then the other variables that are not accessible from the currently selected node for now, uh, there aren't any, but we will see after using variables how it works. So if I go to preview, you will see the app renders once a user uses it. And as you can see, it's like a regular app. You can't actually move the node because it's really the final render of the app. Then you can also search things like nodes or variables, which can be really useful. And here there's a button that allows you to search through all the possible nodes you can create. So just to show you here, we would need a list node. So I'm going to create it. And then we can actually remove all of the other nodes like this. And as you see, this node is a really special node. It's composed of two children nodes, item and empty. Item represents an item of the list. It's really interesting because you can define once how the item should look like, but then it will render all of those characteristics the same for all of the items in the list. And here, if I add an image, you can see it also adds on an image for all of the items. And if I click on the list and I add a new item, for example, 
you can see that the item is added and they all look the same. The empty node represents how the list should be rendered when there's zero items in the list. So here I can say no item in your inventory because we're creating an inventory app. Now let's improve our item by making it look the way that we want. So we will have a title for the item like this. Also a quantity and a price. And now we have all of the information that we need, but it doesn't look exactly the way that we want. And so to do this, we'll use the node section and we'll create several sections to change the upper appearance and make our list look good. So I'm going to put one section like this with another one inside it. In which I'm going to add our title and quantity. And here I'm going to add this one. And so the first thing I'm going to do is change the direction of the section like this. Then I'm going to change the size of the image because it's too big. And as you can see, it stretches the image, and that's not what we want. We want to crop the image and preserve it to aspect ratio. So to do this, we'll change the fill attribute of the image to cover. And as you can see, it already looks better. And so here, I've added this section also, which as you can see, all of the sections have a width of auto, which means it adapts to its content. And what we want here is to have something taking all of the space in width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 100% here. And here I want it to take all of the remaining space in width. So I'm going to just use the grow attribute. And then I'm going to align everything on the left. Then I'm going to change the direction of this like this. Also, I'm going to add some temporary text. For example, here I want the name of the item. And it's a quantity, so I add its price. Finally, I want to take 100% of this. And then I'm going to make this one grow. And I'm going to align the text on the left side. If you want to know about how to lay out things and change the sizing or any more of those specific features, I advise you to go check out our complete guide section that talks about the layout component and the section node which goes into super in-depth detail about everything you can do to place all of the different elements of your app. Here, I'm just gonna change the font size to bold. And change this color to red. And this one to blue. I'm going to align this section to the top. Now that we have our list of items, if I go here, I can see that it's actually connected to the list. And what we're going to do is connect our items to a database that will be shared between everyone, and there'll be real data to do so. So we're going to use an Airtable database. So let's go to our database. When you first create an Airtable database, it will look like this. So what we're going to do is create the fields we need for our inventory items. So I'm going to start by renaming the project. The table. I'm going to add a description. And I'm going to delete this. Then we're going to need currency. Price in dollar. 
quantity, number, which is an integer number because we don't want values such as 2.3 for an item. Then I'm going to add an attachment which allows you to link files to your item. And here we need an image. And finally, I'm going to add an ID. To do so, I'm going to use a formula and type in record ID. So now that your database is created, feel free to create any item that you need. Once it's done, you can go back to your Vault App project and add your Airtable database to your list to display your items. So let's go to Nodes and search for the Airtable one. I'm going to add the Airtable node to the node tree, then move all of the nodes inside the Airtable node so every action or variable created on the node will be accessible from any of those nodes. And now I need to configure Airtable. To start off with, I need the API key. So you have to go back into Airtable, go to your account, and here you can copy the API key and add it into your configuration panel. Then, as you see, the database attribute appears. You can select your database, then your table, and that's it. Now your table has been configured. So now we are going to create a graph that will store into a variable all of the items, then connect it to the list. To do so, I'm going to add a block on the graph of the Airtable node. The block appear, to say that when this node appears, to do something. Then what I'm going to do is list records to get all of the records from the project table that we created on our node. Then I'm going to take the result of the action and promote it to a variable and connect it. It's important to handle errors because sometimes something doesn't quite work. To do so, I'm simply going to use the condition node. To say that if it works, so if success is true, then we set the record. Otherwise, we debug the error. In some applications, you're going to want this to show in a modal or in a display window like this. But for now, this will be enough because at least we'll be able to see the error if there is one. Now that we've created our record variable, I can go back to the variable panel and see that it's created on the app node. I can either move it on Airtable or directly on list, but for now it's fine to just let it stay there. I'm going to rename it product. And then I will be able to use it inside of our list. So if I go to my list, I can see that I have some text. But if I click on this link to link other variables, I can see that I can link products directly. And in the list, I can also note that the item node declares two variables, an item variable and an index variable. Index is a number starting from zero, which corresponds to the number of items, the first being zero. Item is actually the data of a row of the list. So now I can simply connect the data from our item to our different nodes. So for title, I'm going to select item.name. For quantity, what I'm going to do because what I want is to keep the x, is to create a formula in which I'm going to write x, then add the quantity variable. Then for price, we'll apply the same principle, but I'll add price like this so I can show you the difference. And then for the image, I'll connect item.image. By the way, don't forget to save your project every once in a while while you're working on it. Now, if I click on preview, I can see that all of my items are connected. And so here you have the quantity that has an X in front of it. 
but here we don't have the dollar sign like we wanted. To do so, it will be the same thing that we did for quantity. Instead of directly linking the price, I'm going to create a formula. Now that we have a list with all of the items, I'm going to create a modal that allows us to display all of the detailed information about one item and also to change the quantity of the item. I'm going to use the modal node. And I'm going to create it right under Airtable because we might need some information from a variable created on Airtable. Now if I click on the modal, it looks like this for now. We're going to add all of the information concerning the product, meaning an image, the name of the product, which we'll put in bold, The price, we're going to use a red color for that. We'll also need the description. and two good buttons to change the quantity. And for that, I'm going to add a section with a button minus and a button plus and a text in between that will tell us the quantity selected. For the image, just as we did in the list, we're going to use a cover setting so that it doesn't distort the image. Something I also like to do with modals is to make it so that when you click outside of the modal, it automatically closes. Now just add the graph on the modal node, which starts with a request close event. And then set the is open variable to no. This way, the modal will be closed when you click out of it. Now we need to open the modal. If I go here, I can see that the isOpen variable was created on the modal. However, to be able to use it from our list, we need the variable to be moved up. I can either add it to Airtable, which is already a parent of the list, or to the app. We're going to go with the app in this case. So if I click on the item now, I can see that in available variables, there is is open from the modal. Now I can simply create a graph on the item with a click event, which is going to open the modal. So we can try to see if it works. And here we go. If I click on it, it does successfully open the modal. But for now, the information here is all the same. So we're going to need to connect it to the actual app. See you soon in the next no-code training session.